Good afternoon, sir. Here is Pratibha Pandey from CIDC. Himant sir, am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, could I start the session, sir? Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Now I welcome our expert, Dr. Hemant Kumar Vinayak, Associate Professor, Entrepreneurship Development and Industrial Coordination, National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research. He is PhD from Department of Earthquake Engineering, IIT Rudki. He has more than 21 years of experience in academia as well as in industry. He has guided four PhD theses and 70, 70 MTech theses. He has received several awards like Himanchal Pradesh State Innovation Award 2014-15. He has more than seven copyright works. He has delivered more than 100 lectures as expert. He has more than 20 organizational life membership his 25 research publication published in international journals. Welcome to you, sir. Now over to sure. you, sir. Please take the session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I thank CIDC for giving me the opportunity to share whatever the experience I have gained as a faculty in the civil department earlier in NIT Hamirpur. So, my most of my photographs will be that of related to the state of Himachal Pradesh along with the various construction practice aspects. So I will be sharing my screen now. I uh, hope my screen is visible. No, no, sir, not yet, sir. It's not visible, sir. It is visible now? No, sir. Uh, any other participant? The screen is not visible. No, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Now, okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, dear participants, the topic is construction practice issues and uh, solutions. Uh, although earlier I was in the Department of Entrepreneurship Development and Industry Coordination Department, but now I have been shifted to the Rural Development Department. Now, uh, this is, as I told you that for 12 years, I have worked in NIT Hamirpo in the Department of Civil Engineering. So whatever the knowledge related to the construction practice aspect that I will be talking to you, the faculties in general, because as I've learned that not all the faculties are from the Civil Engineering Department. So I will try to keep my lecture uh, very simple with photographs so that all the participants can actually understand. When you talk about hills, because I will be talking both in context of hills and plains. So when you talk in terms of hills, the major problem that is there is that these hills are a slope and as per the codal provision, not more than 30 degree slope is allowed. But unfortunately, uh, because of pressure, population pressure and so on, the authorities are forced uh, to, you know, they just leave it and then the construction goes on. And this is the reason that one of the buildings which actually collapsed, which was there in Kachi Ghati, and uh, this was that particular building about which everybody is aware of that how did this particular building has actually collapsed. <laughs> Now, if you see 
this particular collapse of this particular building the place itself is called as kachi ghati means a uh, area which is very soft in nature and that is the reason that the settlement actually went on taking place in this particular area and this is the reason that this whole uh, six story building has actually collapsed this area of ship now <clears throat> if we talk in uh, terms of uh, planes then the most common pattern of construction is this row housing means one after buildings are attached with wall and uh, then these construction takes place but if you talk in context of uh, civil engineering here again one of the recent incidences that took place was that in Gur gurgaon or gurugram where basically what has happened that uh some major alterations was taking place and then this kind of a collapse of the slab has taken place so first of all we will uh, see this particular collapse and then we will talk in context of the report so normally i also do one thing that whatever we see the present scenario with respect to that if we try to relate that to what were the issues in the construction practice then we are able to understand in a better way now this is that particular slab which had actually collapsed in gurugram where uh, basically so much of news actually came up that uh, that one of the from the top 6 floor to and so on that collapse have actually taken place this is that particular uh, slab collapse now the report that recently came up was this uh this one which says that Gur gurgaon collapse builder faces second fir six other book and so on now if you read this Idea is that you can now move into this building, and you know, then the, the owner can start living there. Now that was there in 2017 June. We are near to the five years, and if till five years nothing has happened, it means that for me the construction was might be okay unless and until this is where basically what has happened, and against the person who were getting major addition only alteration on the sixth floor as per the local inquiry. my request to the faculty will be that in case you are there in some particular building do not carry out any kind of major alterations oblique any additions in the building because when you when we design any particular building those buildings are as per that particular you know structural configuration that the buildings are designed and when you try to major alteration is only that i have seen that there are many slabs which are corroded and they are still lying like that but they have never collapsed in this particular way it is only that when you try to remove the support in such a haphazard manner that only such kind of collapse can occur that's what my observation is now <clears throat> so in this case that is how the row housing is now let me talk in this context that when we see these uh, row housing what is the issues that i see you have around 15 houses in a row whereas this is another sector and this is what the expansion gap is between the two blocks whereas in this particular case there are no so what the present construction practice is or time seeing in the planes are that we just go on constructing it as a very long building yes those kind of buildings might be okay with respect to non aspect prone area uh, but not uh, acceptable in context of uh, earthquake prone area this and uh, these are some of the construction practice practices that you normally see are the bricks the you know the 
buildings with the glass walls, the stone, and all this earthquake resistant feature, what we call it as Taji Diwar. Now, when this RCC construction is there, these kind of constructions uh, came up when you want to make up a very high rise building, say, suppose four, five, six story, and so on. And it is in this context that uh, I, if there is any particular question, you can, yes, okay, put up. Okay. So here you can see that this is the four or five story when you want to construct it, then we go for such. Now the difference between when you are putting up a simple glass and when you are putting up the walls, the difference is that these are basically lightweight and in context of weight on the buildings, this is will be much better than with respect to the bricks. The only context is that when a yes, sun and earthquake will come, then obviously the chances of a breakage of these particular glasses will be the first one. This is what is a form, uh, common scenario that we had seen something around 20 years back in the case of Burj. When you have a very thin columns and the similar aspect you can see in these particular pictures also, which has, were, are being are already constructed. And there, basically, to the faculties, again, I would say that, well, the unfortunate part is that we want more and more of the space. And we concentrate more on upon these particular slabs and beams. And uh, we do not concentrate upon these particular columns. And it is this reason that you can already see that these are the damages which has taken place in these case of earthquake. This is what the common scenario you will find across the hills. And you will find that because of the cost factor, they are not able, they do not want or they are not able to construct the walls. But as such, these particular frames, we call it as a soft story with respect to top one. So then during an earthquake, obviously, the chances are that these particular buildings are going to fail. And uh, what is going to happen in case you have a very long building I talked about with respect to row? So you might have studied in the strength of material, the torsional aspect. So here you can see that these particular columns are standing, but unfortunately these columns have twisted just in between. So this is what uh, basically these, this is the effect that when you construct a very long building. Uh, whenever we talk about buildings, especially in urban areas, we talk about what we call it as structural stability certificate, which is given by a structural engineers. And uh, then in these particular cases, we say that this particular building is safe. But uh, the unfortunate part is that once these particular buildings are constructed, then uh, later on, you can see that these kind of, you know, pipes come up because then when there is a deficiency in the design, then obviously these kind of of uh, you know supports are given but then the questions are that uh, this is what we have a satellite town near this chandigarh so my then we start questioning that whether these have been constructed with or without the structural stability certificates so the point is that when the building was constructed we had this this particular building uh, been okay with respect to design, why do we require such kind of additional supports? This is what I told you that the concept of soft story. Here basically you, basically for parking, we just leave those particular places in the bottom. But uh, these particular, but then this is what the scenario which was there in terms of the Boja earthquake where basically it has, you know, collapsed. Then what is the options is that they talk about these all RCC shear walls in the ground floor. There is one of the options that most of the people do not want to go for is the masonry construction, especially in these two or three stories. But if they go for these two or three story, which we have in the rural areas, especially the masonry buildings, what we call it. So then one can go for all this plinth band, lintel band, roof band. Uh, these, the difference between a beam and a band, most of the people doesn't understand the difference. Well, that is technical in context that 
beam take up the vertical load and bands they don't take up any load instead they try to bind this particular structure and that's what they try to you know uniformly distribute the load so here you can see this is plain this is lintel and then this is the root band what is extra required is that you need from the corners at least two feet of a space between either from the corner or between two openings that is the requirement with respect to uh, these masonry buildings what you will find in the rural areas what actually happen uh, when we talk about construction practices issues then if you are getting your house constructed then most of the time we go for trying to save our uh, you know this expenditure with respect to the masons you know when we want to spend on our house when uh, we have to you know buy something which is lighting you want to talk about any beautiful colors fascias and so on there the owner is ready to spend whatever the amount they require but when it comes to the structural stability it has happened that as per the codal provision we need to bend it by 135 degree but this is a 90 degree bend of the reinforcement and if you say that well this is the job of the mason but the unfortunate part is that we are not ready to pay him extra for bending it because what he says is that if i am putting up a 135 degree bend then i can do some amount of work and when i go for 135 degree bend then the amount of the labor required is more so that is where basically the issue is that we normally compromise with respect to structural stability and this is what happens and in this case what has happened was the ring had actually opened up during the when we have the problems in our hand do we have the solutions so here you can see this was a school which was before what we use the term retrofitting retrofitting is a term term used suppose i constructed a building which was in say suppose 1980s or 1990 and any particular building is constructed normally for 50 years so now after say suppose of 40 years we can see that oh, whether i can bring that particular building to the present level or say suppose 20 years into 20 2000 some building was constructed that was with some particular code so bringing that building to the present code is what we call it as retrofitting and if you say that well there are some cracks in the building so if you just fill up those cracks then that will be called as strengthening and not retrofitting so here you can see what we did was that we had a masonry column we had put up reinforcement and then put up the concrete so that there are no failures in this columns there was uh, two openings was there and we removed the unnecessary opening of the window and then we got one door in the center this is what you can see this this particular roof does not have a bracing but this is what is the cross bracing that has been put up so that is what are the solutions basically if you have got some particular building constructed which are old then we try to bring it to the present code and we say that that is with respect to present code here you can see this was the building situation when it was we saw it and then we did all those particular mesh meshing on both the side reinforcement and both the side to bring it to the level of present code many a times you put up all those junk material onto their rooftop and those particular slabs start leaking so you just need to remove such kind of junk so that your slab doesn't get to now i did some particular work projects in the state of himachal pradesh to showcase that this is the kind of uh, non provision of earthquake resistant or we say that we don't follow the codes in the rural areas uh, in terms of be it bands corner vertical steel opening distances and so on. and that was the construction practice in 2012 and we normally say that not much has changed when we see the construction practices being followed in the rural areas when it comes to the pradhan mantri awas yojana 
in that particular case whatever the construction practices that mason knows they go for it except for one or two where some of the engineers they have tried to enter and they have tried to bring these lintel bands over to these particular structures that somehow you can find but very few you will find that construction practices goes as per the mason's knowledge and the owner doesn't want to get into the technical aspect this is the unfortunate part i did uh, visited in the northeast areas as well so this these are the buildings in the agartala and here you can see that this is what they have tried to put up the lintel band so only lintel band in rcc but both lintel and sill band in the masonry it is required so here you can see in the masonry they might have tried to put up the sill bands in this particular case when we talk about buildings then along with the structural aspects i think these are the components which are normally left out with respect to electrical and this is the reason that one or the other time you will always find in some high rise buildings some fire accidents and if you ask them that what is the reason well normally the short circuit so obviously if you are putting such kind of connections where one is not very much vigilant then obviously you will have such kind of so one needs to see that if the buildings are there whether there is an appropriate electrical connection dark corridors or you will find all these kind of components also that although i have a staircase i have a ramps are constructed but then the obstructions are such that they are non usable which you will find at most of the locations these are the symptoms when ignored now most of the houses or the government offices basically this is what the dampness that you normally see and if you find such kind of vertical cracks in the columns then it means that the reinforcement has corroded and then this is what the simple signs of corrosion of these reinforcements are there and then you can see all those particular patches is coming out what is going to happen is that if you step on these particular uh, structures then there will be partial collapse of might be partial collapse of these particular structures coming to one of the components most of the time uh, we when we want to construct the houses in the rural areas and if the soil is clay here you can see that during summer you will find such kind of uh, you know lump formations or even these wide cracks are there so identification of the clay soil site and treatment with the lime to reduce expansion and com compression effect on the building so this is what we normally do that uh, we normally carry out uh, with respect to our geotechnical this liquid limit and plastic limit test we add up lime to it to convert this clay soil into a sandy soil that is one way so if you don't do it then obviously you are bound to get such kind of cracks in your building the buildings are not going to fall off it is only that you will find such kind of cracks and every time you will be in a psychological fear what we call it as a limit state of serviceability we are afraid in a building which vibrates too much this is the reason that if you are moving on a cable stayed bridge like ramdula or lakshmidula in the haridwar or those areas so you are afraid why because it is vibrating beyond an acceptable limit for a human so that's what we call it as limit state of vibration limit state of uh, you know cracks uh, that's what the under this so here you can see now this is what has happened actually this is a single story but since it was a clay soil and so the so the masons unfortunately can handle only the routine sites and the works that is sites without issues no long spans height and so on but unfortunately when we construct such small buildings as well we have to face such kind of issues there is one more uh, solution when you talk about uh, without uh, you know you don't want to put lime and so on so then one can go for such kind of solutions use the sand 
before the below the foundation means that i have made a, that you know dug my trench and then i am putting up the sand and then this is what is the ramming has been done why because whatever the contraction and expansion of these particular sand will be mud will be there that will not tra get transferred through this particular sand to the bed another option that i told you that when you have a very high rise buildings then in that case that either uh, like glasses we don't uh, say that you should go for a glasses but then uh, if you want to go instead of bricks this is another alternative which is which are being used in a very large scale especially in all those high rise uh, towers that is this is autoclave aerated autoclave blocks basically aac blocks these are light in weight and another aspect is that these are basically porous so porous in the sense that they have bubbles in it so that reduces the thermal load onto the building and also being light in the weight that will reduce the weight of the building as well so but then the, there are issues with the owners that since they <coughs> want to <coughs> go for those conventional methods so we normally go for the bricks and we are, are always struggling with all those efflorescences means all those white salt what you see are coming out of the bricks are those efflorescences that doesn't come up in this particular autoclave blocks yes these particular blocks being light in weight they can be cut with a saw so again there is a fear of uh, security is there but and another aspect is that how much we although we in lectures in symposium workshop we talk about all those carbon credits carbon footprint climate change and so on uh, we still need to see that how much we can practice that aspect of thermal efficiency and being sensitive so that we go for such kind of new technology now this is what one of the buildings that is being constructed with a high density autoclave blocks in a confined masonry this is another uh, terminology which was already approved in nbc national building code 2016 where basically these particular columns get interlocked with these particular this uh, autoclave aerated blocks let us see some of the without equipment uh, what kind of test one can carry out in the field itself uh, this iec information education and communication material was developed for uh, the rural development department of himachal pradesh when they said that under manrega lot of constructions are taking place but the unfortunate part is that those people who are involved they hardly know about these building material so it is just that obviously a cement bag is there you put your hand inside it you should be able to feel cold if you don't find it if it is hot it means that hydration has already started taking place obviously there should not be any lumps you should be able to pick it up you can check with respect to stone you can check with respect to wood and the most common one that is with respect to sand concrete aggregate and the bricks the testing are that you take up the sand which is being used for construction put it in a simple glass of water and just see that do you find that particular water to be muddy if that is so you are using a sand which is mixed with the mud and it is not a pure sand if you are taking up a concrete and if you find too much of water coming out of that concrete it means that it contains too much of a water or if you are not able to you know make a kind of a laddu what we call as a ball in, of that concrete it means that it doesn't have an appropriate amount of water or the sand aspect or the proper ratio is not when it comes to the aggregate the aggregate uh, should always be you know uh, angular means it should be a crushed one if you are using the round aggregates the issues will be with respect to bonding the bond will not be there much and then obviously the strength of the concrete will be less e bricks if you are throwing it at a particular height of 1 meter bricks of not a good one 
then afterwards once you are taking up a break it should not happen that it should take up water more than 20% its weight it means that it is too much porous and so on so these are some of the test methods for various building material which one can carry out at the site itself without any other instrument but unfortunate part is that most of the owners in the rural areas are unaware about such things mostly concerned about the non structural aspects of what way the color of my walls will be or you know what kind of lightings i'm going to fix up what kind of tap designs i'm going to fit and so on and so on. in most of the rural areas we have even uh, seen that the constructions are beyond some particular acceptable limits for example in the present code most of the architects are even still going by this 9 inch column whereas as per the code of is 13920 2016 nine inch column is now no way acceptable it has to be minimum 1 ft or you will find that you are putting up a column and then when you go to a top roof then you have you know you you do said that i don't want a column now or uh, you don't na feel that oh there is any difference between a masonry column and an rcc column or you have put up two columns in the bottom but one column is in the center there is no alignment and so on. so <coughs> these are the construction practices what i say are the issues which you will find it in case of uh, rural areas especially because there are no architects there are no structural engineers and it is just that uh, the rural people are you know either they just unknowingly they are living in such kind of structures waiting for some particular extreme loading to come up and then uh, there could be a disaster uh, these are some more constructions uh, with some masonry columns uh, those who are from civil engineering side they very well know that such kind of constructions are we don't say that not acceptable but i do not know if they would be teaching to their students such kind of construction with the masonry columns then immediately the question arises is that if those things are not taught to the students then how these things have penetrated inside the society so here again some more example of those particular masonry columns here you can see masonry columns but then beautiful uh, stilt construction is there with all those uh, good colors but unfortunately the masonry columns in the bottom or all these particular here you can see masonry columns this is again a very surprising i don't know how i am seeing all these masonry columns here so question is is analysis of structure is the part of the slavers of btex again you can see this is one particular school getting constructed and we say that there is no negative steel negative steel in the sense that when you construct uh, any particular uh, you know uh, slab then this there is a bent up there is a basically at 1/4 1/7 distance from the edge there is a bent up which is given to the reinforcement now if you don't give such kind of uh, bent ups obviously the slab is going to sag it is going to leak and then later on the reinforcement is going to get corroded and then you will be forced after just 10 years to remove all those particular slab do the recasting of the slab and then again after 10 years again just go on wasting the public money so so here this is one such example where you can see that the beam was there but then cracks are there on both side of these particular beams and here also all those these are all structural cracks and unfortunately many of the owners are unaware of these things over that the contractor will just put up all those particular you know mortar and then put up the tile you will be happy by seeing all those you know glazed tiles but later on when in case of any extreme loadings obviously these buildings are going to fall out so here you can see uh, leakages in the formwork as one of the reasons 
that you don't find good quality slabs so here you can see that the slab has been put up but then there are some gaps in between and if you don't want any gaps then what you do is that you use all those particular brown tapes between the sheets so that once we put up the concrete there is no leakages of any cement uh, water also and here you also you can see that the shattering plates were put up but then they did not want bother to put up the cellular so, so such are the small issues uh, sm small issues which are there which are left out during the construction which are not the part of the design in the case of designs we sit in the office and whatever the analysis in design we do it are highly idealistic but in the field you will always find lot of issues with respect to construction practice okay this is one of that particular walls we are trying to retrofit it so then we have put up a mesh of the reinforcement this mesh of the reinforcement the reinforcement what is there in the ground floor and what is there in the first floor should match so this is the reason that the holes were drilled and then the reinforcement was taken up to the first floor and the jacketing of the masonry with rcc wall 75 mm thick done from inside similarly you do it from the outside as, as well here you can see this is the ground floor this is the first floor or uh, this is the wall and then we had put up all this particular reinforcement mesh from outside and then put up the plates like this and do the concrete okay the ground floor where you find that the walls are thick you don't go for it but inside one again since the first floor it was there we did it these are some of the photographs of the schools where we did all those uh, you know put up the solutions actually here you can see this was a library earlier also i showed the photograph and we had put up all those junk so this is the leakages or the seepages that the principal complained of and uh, but then we just said that madam just remove this so that. so even in your uh, houses where you have put up all those junk material on the rooftop just see if it can be removed <clears throat> this is again the corridor with a masonry column after retrofitting okay this is without bracings from inside it was a mesh and then with the bracings basically here you can see how it is looking like this is when you want to do the bracing from inside again this is in uh, retrofitting of masonry columns and the rubble masonry before retrofitting and after this is again a random rubble masonry uh, you will not find such kind of random rubble masonry in general obviously except in the hilly areas uh, there are many a times we just put up the non structural elements so here you can see the water tank was there we just got it removed from this particular portion it was there on the cantilever as well as on this stairs many a times the junk get deposited near to that walls makes it damp you just need to do the cleaning to reduce the lateral load as well as the remove the dampness in the walls these are some of the again the schools were there where basically some issues were there walls were there with 50 cm thick with the mud was there the cracks got developed so you put up the welded wire mesh technically welded wire mesh is going to take up the tensile load of these particular and in between you will be putting up the grouts to fill all these particular cracks so this is how you can most of the cracks will always appear at the lintel level from the corners and then you put up all the gi welded wire mesh to ensure that those particular cracks get uh, you know structurally repaired and in future the cracks doesn't here you can see where you have a masonry then what you have done is that you have put up a mesh here to develop the integrity in the masonry structure normally on the roofs nobody goes they are just left out vegetations are there and all these particular vegetations uh, will then you know 
will not allow the water to get drained off very easily so you will have all those seepages and leakages and so this is what the water proofing was done on the most of the time we just leave the roofs like that only we don't uh, you know waterproof it to protect the roof reinforcement from getting corroded again some more you know wherever the cracks were there the repair was done yeah these are all the various locations in there. as i already told you in the earlier slide that one of the construction practice that has been accepted now in nbc is the confined masonry you don't do any analysis design standard is for three stories or four stories use just 10 mm reinforcement with all those bricks but on the opening both side you are supposed to use two reinforcement here again both side sill band sill band lintel band and so on and uh, that that is way how basically in case you do not have a structural design it is just that most of the constructions in the rural areas they are dependent on mason and they just use their own judgment and go for the use of reinforcement so at least by this confined masonry concept <coughs> the good thing will be that they don't need a design and then they can just use uh, the guidelines for or the code of practice for construction this is the schematic diagram of <clears throat> that particular confined masonry in the corner sill plinth band sill band this is a plinth sill lintel and so on and these all bands move all, all around if i uh, you know zoom this then what you will see is that these are having two things here you can see here if you can see these are having the two things means the column is interlocked with the brick masonry so this is the reason that it is called as confined masonry means you are confining the masonry structure by all these confining columns as well as all this on the jams of these windows as well as these doors <clears throat> this is the concept of a masonry where you put up the sill band and so on and even the lintel band the only difference between this confined masonry and this simple masonry is you use only single reinforcement whereas in this case you will be using four reinforcements along with two reinforcements in the and here you can see that we are getting uh, one mason training we have conducted lot of mason training so here you can see in the masonry here you are putting up a single reinforcement and another thing is that this kind of if for those who are seeing a very strange that what kind of wall this is then this wall is called as rat trap bond in this case also 15% uh, the bricks used is less as well as with respect to thermal efficiency it is said to be a better with respect to conventional reinforcement this is what you can see here this is a normally schematic diagram where you use single reinforcement in the bricks and uh, the same thing uh, we did it during our mason training that we used uh, these a uh, single reinforcement and then here this is what we call it as dpc damp proof course so that your water doesn't move up we call it as a rising dampness which you this is the reason that most of the efflorescence you will find in your houses so here again and for those who said that what does a plinth band look like so this is what a plinth band is single reinforcement and then a plinth band this is how a footing is yeah again we are so here after doing this this are step wise and then we are putting all those uh, damp proof course so that the dampness 
does not rise up from the ground to the walls uh, i showed you some of the cracks in the building and here you can see this is one such school it is a collage of structural cracks from outside this building was constructed in an agricultural area or agricultural land solely and then uh, all those cracks were then later on you know uh, we treated all these particular cracks with all those you know epoxy grouts with the non sink grout another aspect is that in the government buildings around all those buildings we normally have the trenches to drain of the water but normally that is left out in the case of normal buildings so this is what we did that all around that we had put up dig up the trenches so that <coughs> the water doesn't accumulate so drain lining correction avoiding avoid differential settlement differential settlement means you will only have the cracks in such a manner if if there are differential settlement means some portion will settle some will not or some will settle by 5 some will settle by 3 and so on again here you can see these are all those particular collage of cracks and then if you want to get it rectified you get it rectified in this by putting up nipples and the grout and then you know putting up all those structural measures that we had seen with respect to lining lime also we'll see and then you know masonry columns were there so putting up all those reinforcement and then putting up the concrete such kind of solutions uh, what advantage is that it will reduce the cost of if I, if suppose my building is already constructed so should i go for construction of new building no it you should not because that will be unnecessarily put up a financial burden so go for such kind of simple retrofitting concept so that the you the cost of normal whatever the building is we normally say that in such kind of measures if the my cost is one third of the new, total cost of a new building then one should adopt such kind of measures so okay. here you can see putting up the reinforcement such that tomorrow if there is any event of an you know a steam blowing or whatever wherever the clay soil was there we had drill up the holes and then put up those lines so lines so that i can convert that particular clay soil into a sand so i had a similar one figure then in some other cases again this was a big, a school in shimla where basically the cracks got developed so then holes were dig up and then they had grouted off with all those particular you know machines and then try to fill up that particular area so that whatever these cracks which has got developed should not be now this is a construction practice concerns and issue let us talk in terms of reinforcement most of the time we are not aware of that if you see all these isi marks as per specifications and so on then that isi mark is not correct instead the correct isi mark is the one which you will find it on your drinking water bottles and uh, here you can see it is always written with a code number and the manufacturing license number if you find it on the isi mark then only it is a correct isi mark but what actually happens is that many a times these isi marks are put up on to that particular some portions here you can see this isi mark has been you know put up so the point here is that one should not uh, use uh, such kind of material which the bureau of indian standards says that it is a misuse of standard isi i have already discussed this aspect also that 90 degree 135 this is what i was talking about that here you can see that if you don't put up a negative then sagging of the slab takes place reinforcement get corroded and so you will have that so at that particular time when the this this slab 
had actually you know the portion of this has fallen i was there only and uh, here you can see the slab is sagging so they have put up uh, such kind of column just to see that this further doesn't sag but then this construction is totally a failure construction and this is the reason that they have even said that let us demolish this particular building but the issue is those buildings which have been constructed with a design period of uh, uh, 50 years unfortunate part is that because of construction practice i would not say here the material but it is to do with the construction practice there is a difference between construction practice and material aspects and the design but the practice which was used to do the construction was faulty this is what actually happens that uh, we provide such kind of provisions here was a drain pipe and it was blocked water got accumulated so obviously wherever the services are there you are supposed to have those particular services operational we sometimes are the in the case of government buildings the, they are careless let the drain be blocked in water an issue but then if it is blocked obviously you will have those particular slab or if your plinth level is not above that particular ground so you will have all those kind of a seepages of water inside the building. and that's what i discussed also that you have a concrete quality poor in the sense that reinforce that the water has gone inside reinforcement corroded and then finally you can see such kind of vertical crack. The electrical wiring aspect or you can uh, see that this the we call it as aggregation the concrete has not bonded with the reinforcement flooring where you use too much of water then obviously you will have such kind of a breakages in the floor <coughs> this is what the recently in the newspaper it came up that still parking plus they take necessary actions after the advice of expertise. So here you can see that you have one, two, three, four, five. Basically, this is a stilt plus four. And uh, you know, uh, the state of Haryana basically they have said that okay, you can go for it. Well, this is what is a faulty construction. You we normally say that between any two reinforcement there should be so much of at least gap is there such that aggregate can go inside and there is a bonding of reinforcement and the concrete if such kind of constructions are there these are not appropriate constructions and unfortunately these get covered up with the plasters and so on and the owner is just you know they live in such kind of what we can say is not a good construction practice buildings this is what i was talking about here you can see that the ring, the charges are totally corroded when your land is settling then the very obviously you can see such kind of gap between the staircases the tiles and so on This is what I've been telling about the various, uh, you know, uh, the defects which are possible. And as I told you that in various school surveys that was carried out. So here you can see uh, this one, this one. And this is what you can see are the issues. You can see the diagonal cracks. These, these are the buildings with the diagonal crack, the vertical cracks. This is the kind of a, you know, the dampness, what you will find in case you don't put up appropriate damp proof courses. You will have all those particular corrosion of the cement. Your toilets and other will be heavy having dampness and so on and so on. These are all basically, I'm talking in context of the government building mostly not in context of the residential of our own houses because there we take personal care of it. so thank you very much there are five minutes left uh, in case there are some particular questions or points to discuss 
anybody <clears throat> sir uh, as far as presentations are concerned we don't share the presentations because these particular photographs which has been taken up are the photographs the owners were not taken up any permission that i can take up their you know uh, pictures of their basically the houses we if uh, show these particular photographs it is just for the educational purposes if you want to see all those particular cracks what i used to do was that these are all the works of the students based on the assignment in case of civil engineering or any other just ask your students to go to the nearby area and just uh, take the photographs and they will bring to you hundreds and thousands of such particular photographs of the buildings with the cracks <clears throat> good afternoon sir yes mr palash yes this is palash kali speaking from holdia institute of technology from west bengal sir actually uh, now we have seen so all monitoring system is, is basically covered by iot system <laughs> Thing from agriculture to everything. So, can the uh, actually this kind of thing, uh, actually the track or building construction, uh, can be monitored by IoT system? By IoT people? No, sir. Internet of Things. Acha IoT. Yes. that the first of all the owner has to get uh, no sir no sir and, sorry i am not i am not telling this thing actually iot based uh, actually computing system so uh, uh, now uh, i have seen there are lots of articles are there so starting from agriculture going to everything they controlled by iot based system internet of thing so okay. then this type of construction uh, your any kind of activity uh, in this aspects the iot system can be incorporated those things are being or might be carried out in case of those projects or buildings where the uh, you know the amount involved is in terms of crores when you talk about all those big cities like noida if you are talking about all those big towers 10 15 stories there you can talk about all those but when the construction comes up what i have showed you all those particular pictures these particular pictures pertain to all those rural areas and the schools and so on so the issue is in all these cases i do not know to what extent uh, the money can be feeded for such kind of uh, you know means in the case of when you talk about iot we have to see that how much expenditure is involved and whether the owner will be ready to pay for it that is what i see the issue is and in the case of big projects which are worth in crores the amount doesn't matter at all so this is the reason that one has to really see the economics of that particular aspect of iot thank you okay. can you enlighten about the hollow blocks versus vis a vis uh, porotherm i am not able to understand are you talking about porotherm as autoclave aerated block uh, because see when it comes to hollow blocks hollow blocks we have seen that it is not successful when it is to be used as an infill in the case of buildings why especially these autoclave uh, hollow blocks are basically if they are 8 inches thick you have an outer layer of 1 inch 2 inch gap 2 inch then 2 inch 1 inch so when you are breaking it or when you are trying to chisel it 
for an internal wiring then in that particular case that hollow block breaks off and this is the reason that if you say that okay where i should use the hollow blocks hollow blocks are only and only good with respect to boundary walls where you don't have to do any kind of any internal wiring and you just have to use it uh, just as a simple boundary wall there in not too much of solid blocks are required i do not know if you are talking about porotherm bricks as the same autoclave rated blocks if they are the same then the as i told you the only issue with respect to hollow blocks is with respect to the wiring that is what i have seen <clears throat> this hollow blocks by porotherm smart brick designed to i am not actually very frankly i am not aware about this porotherm and who are the suppliers of these particular blocks here okay porotherm bricks so that is basically mostly i can see it is in Trivandrum, Pondicherry, Coimbatore, Erode. It is basically with respect to uh, south. Okay. So I don't know if they if they are the similar as autoclave rated block. I will just check it maybe for the. in case there are any other question as far as structurally when you say if these porotherm bricks are having a minimum strength of 7 newton or 10 newton per mm square what we say then obviously you can use it as a replacement for the bricks okay for porotherm bricks are also the hollow bricks so then i would have a serious reservations with respect to the porotherm brick that if they are hollow and if you are trying to chisel it for internal wiring you will have an issue because that's what we have seen the issue with respect to hollow blocks that internal wiring you cannot do it properly outside wiring if you want to do you can do it but the internal you can't do <laughs> okay uh from cidc anybody is there yes sir yes uh sir i think there is no question from uh, any participants so uh, i would like to thank you sir for sharing your valuable time and knowledge thank you so much sir um, and uh, with your permission of you sir could i close the session sir yes yes that is up to you thank you thank you very much for giving me as me the opportunity to share my knowledge what i actually have gained over the past 12 years especially with respect to this construction practice because most of the thank time you, sir. thank you sir. Uh, by the, the normally the common man things that if there is a failure of the structure it is only because of some material it is just because it has to do with the uh, basically the issue is with respect to the construction practice and what masons you have actually you know employed for basically all this purpose thank you very much thank you cidc thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you thank you sir